the name of Jesus over every heart and every mind cause I know there is peace within your presence I speak Jesus I just want to speak the name of Jesus till every dark addiction starts to Dankie Heere dat u rarig die koning van ons levens en ons harte is. Ons staan in die teenwoordigheid en ons vraag Heere dat dit wat ons in geloof vir u sê en vir mekaar belei vir ochend. Ons sê vir mekaar, uh, u is die koning van ons harte, u is die koning van ons levens. En Heere dit is so makkelijk om het te sê, maar het uit te leef het ons u gees sy teenwoordigheid nodig. So dankie dat jy met elkeen van ons is. Dankie dat jy in team betrokke is in elkeen van ons levens. Thank you Lord that you're the one who says you never leave us, you never forsake us. You're with us in every moment of every day, giving us that which we need from you in order to bring you glory and honor and praise. And Father, help us to be instruments not only of worship, but of inspiration to one another. May we worship you and inspire one another in our worship of you. Father, thank you for each person. Thank you for all of you. Geestelik, emotioneel, fysisk, financieel. Dit wat hulle nodig het, Heere, jy weet, jy is die God wat betrokke is. En jy weet wat ons van jy af nodig het vir ochend. Sal jy nie asjeblief uit die woord met ons deel vir ochend. Give us the confidence to know that you are the God who's alive and well and working in and through us. And Father, bless this time in your word. Bless this time as we seek to focus on you and honor you. In not just what we, what we think, but Lord, take our hearts, take our heart thoughts captive now and help us to focus on what you would say to us by your Holy Spirit. In Jesus' name, amen. If you have your Bibles, turn to Psalm chapter 1. Psalm 1. Ons gaan die hele Psalm deurwerk van ochend, maar vir die van julle wat laas week nie was, het was vadersdag en ons het gepraat oor goeie advies, goeie raad, wat de mens van een sien hoor, oor wat sy pa met hom gedeel het. So good advice that we got from our fathers, and you remember I said to you, the best advice that we can get about God the Father is to listen to what Jesus the Son says about him, and he says in, in Matthew 6, Jesus says, when you pray, pray in this way. And then he gives us the Our Father, not to memorize, but to use as a pattern for living. And I want to say to you this morning, that pattern for living is a flow out of God's initial plan for us, which was in Genesis chapter 1, you'll remember this, I've preached it a couple of weeks ago, Genesis 1 verse 27, 28, God blessed them and said to them, be fruitful and multiply and fill the earth and subdue the earth and rule over it. You remember that? And it's a multiplication, God, and it's a producing life that we're supposed to live. Now, just to emphasize all of that and to show you that so few people get this right in life, and that's why there's so much negativity and there's so much despondency and there's so much despair. If we take what's happening in Groblesdal and why we made the news for all the wrong reasons, we had various parties and we had various very passionate, emotional people uh, doing all kinds of things to try and uh, bring about fairness, to, to speak about justice, and then to push their own agenda. Because everybody at the end of the day wants to be, let's choose a word, happy. Okay? Uh, everybody wants to be happy. Yes? Okay. Can I show you what happiness is? Can I show you what happiness is? Happiness is realizing that our Father is in heaven. And that his name needs to be hallowed, honored, placed in prime place. Nummer 1 in ons levens moet die Heere sy naam wees. Hy moet ons bron, hy moet ons toevlug. Uh, Psalm 46 verse 1, The Lord is my refuge and my strength, 
The Lord is my refuge and my strength. When things go wrong, when things are bad, when life is not happy, when life is throwing all kinds of curveballs and, and waves and storms and all kinds of things your way, what is your refuge? Who do you go to? Wie is your toevlug? Wie is your bron van krag? Now, we're in church and you're a bunch of Christians, so you're all saying, yes, the Lord's my, sh not the Lord's my shepherd, the Lord's my refuge. But when life hits you, not Sunday morning, when life hits you, is he your refuge? Is he your toevlug? I want to say, I doubt it. Because I don't see many trees standing, doing what Psalm 1 depicts a happy, blessed person is in Christian churches today. We look just like the world. Ons klaas soos die springbokke. Ons, ons, ons is springbok klaas. Ons weet hoe om mismoedig te raak. Ons weet hoe om negatief te raak saam met die ou langsaan. We fall so easily into. Oh, I wonder what's going to happen. No, nothing good. How can you say nothing good? Let, let, me, let, me, let, me, let me give you my sermon, and then we'll talk a bit more. Is that okay? Hmm. So, Psalm 1 starts with, how blessed. How blessed. Okay? And, and the root for that is how happy. How happy he is. All right? You, you, you remember my favorite Afrikaans word, wel, okay, wel geluksalig. Je moet ons so deerskiet, nee, soos een hond wat homself droog maak. Hy is, hy is nat en hy wil homself nou acht droog. Hy begin by sy, by sy nees, wel geluksalig. Okay, how blessed, how wel geluksalig, drie maal geseen is die mens. Okay, you, you heard about the little boy. Dad said to him, listen, it's your birthday. I know you want a puppy. Saturday morning we go to the shop and we're going to get you a puppy. Saturday morning comes, he goes and he presses his face up against the, he go, presses his face up against the window and he has a look and there's all the little puppies and one little puppy's wagging his tail. All the others are just there. And he says, Daddy, I want the one with a happy ending. That, that makes so much sense to me. Well, let me say to you, Christians, we should be the ones with a happy ending. And when people look at our life, what do they see? Do they see a tail that wags? Or what do they actually see? This starts with how blessed. What's the last word in your Bible? Mine is perish. Mine is perish. So I want to say to you that this psalm puts two people on display, the blessed and the dead, the happy and those that are in despair, those that have nothing. I want to say to you as Christians, as those who say, Onse Father, wat in die jimmele is, we're supposed to be part of the blessed. But now I want to show you that I need to just get some water. Sorry, my throat is, my mouth has just gone dry. <clears throat> the first way that the psalm describes the blessed person, and he says, the blessed person doesn't do this. The blessed person says no to these things. What is it? How blessed is the man who does not walk in the counsel of the wicked. I go back to, if you start with our Father who art in heaven, the heaven part means that he's fully able to resource us. He is our bron. So our Father must be one by who ons raad gaan soek. Nee die courant, nee die bierman, nee die wijze man in die school, nee die, dit moet nie iemand anders wees, dit moet God wees. 
Where do we get our counsel? When life doesn't make sense to us, when things are happening that we just can't fathom and we can't make one plus one equals two anymore, it seems like it's three, four, seven, eleven, L, G, B, Q, T, one plus whatever. Okay, when life is just what the world is throwing counsel at, where are we going for our counsel? If you're not going to God, you're going to something that is putting distance between you and God. How can you say that? Well, God says in the Ten Commandments, what's the first commandment? You shall have no other gods before me. You shall have no other gods before me. I must be your number one source. I must be the closest Die, die naaste raad wat jy kry, is moet van my afwees. So as soon as I start looking for counsel in places other than God, I'm putting distance between me and God because I'm putting other gods in the place of God to give me counsel. So be careful as you walk. Be careful as you go do life that you stop, you, you don't start listening to wrong counsel. Blessed is the man who doesn't listen to wrong counsel as he goes through life. Not stopping, just in the passing. And that's what happens. Fopnes, sociale media, dit slaan jou in die verbeige. Dis terwijl jy nog bezig is om die andere dinge in jou dag te doen, dan hoor, did you hear about, did you see this, did you hear that? And then it just sits there. You don't stop and focus on it, you don't, but it just sits there and it builds up. All forms of negativity, all forms of false news, all forms of wrong counsel. Where do you go to for your counsel? The blessed man, the blessed man doesn't go to counsel by the wicked. Then it says, secondly, nor does he stand in the path of sinners. Now, let me just stop here a while and just watch what you're doing. Let me just associate with you a little bit. Let me just get involved in your lifestyle. Let me just stand, not just as I walk past, listen to your counsel, but now let me stop and watch how you start doing things. Second commandment says, you shall make no false idols, no graven images, no false idols. Be careful what you're busy with. Not just you've established in your thinking there's only one God, there's only one source of counsel, there's only one source of truth. But now I'm not going to watch what, but it looks like that guy's being successful. And I I start standing and watching what he's doing. And then it goes over to sitting in the seat of all's rubbish. All's a waste of time. Ach, what does he leave is maar net te loos en sinne loos en is maar net te gestoeierei en ach weet jy, uh, every good deed goes punished. Okay? Every good deed gets punished. Why, why do anything good? And then you start sitting there and out of your mouth comes a mocking and a scoffing of the life that God has given you and me to live. So the blessed man The blessed man watches where he starts getting his advice from. He watches who he's associating with so that he doesn't get pulled into a negative lifestyle and then he doesn't get sitting down and talking and conversing just negative things about the fact that all that God has made is, hmm, well, nothing really works out anyway. So the first description of what a happy, blessed man is, is one who doesn't do three things. Okay? To put it now into the positive, because we like to have the positive. I make sure that my counsel comes from God. I make sure that my actions are driven not by the sinners, but by the, by the righteous, by associating with, with the right people. Do we, do we avoid all sinners? Heck no. Jesus was the friend of publicans. Jesus made it a habit to associate with those that the church didn't want near it. 
but it was always to influence them, not to be influenced by them. Be careful who you align yourself to be influenced by. And then the third thing, obviously, is watch what comes out of your mouth. Guard your speech. Guard your speech. Craig and I, the district superintendent, it's interesting, but uh, we had a conversation. He was in Cape Town, so he was in a good space. He comes from the Cape, and he likes the Cape for some other reason. And when he goes on holiday and he's down at the Cape, everything just seems to be so much nicer. And he has this terrible habit of taking sunsets and posting it on the group and saying, you know, look where I am today, and isn't this a good way to end the day? And he doesn't realize the jealousy and the envy that he, you know, tests us with as he does that. Um, so I just pray for his soul that, you know, Satan would get out of him and that he'd come to his senses. <laughs> And we were talking, and he was in a good space because he was in Cape Town. And he was saying to me, Sean, I'm just sitting here, and, and I'm just wondering. Next week, I have to go back to, to Unified, and I have to go back and preach in my church, and I have to go back and, and take up the authority and the, and the task and the work of being the district superintendent in Gauteng. You know what I was thinking? Why don't you take photos of the sunset there where you work? And why don't you declare that a good end to each day as well? Why just when you're on holiday do you take pictures? Because what you're putting out affects you. Now, we're fortunate here in the valley. I mean, I know some of the farms that you guys go into in the mornings and that you ride out at night, and the sun rises and the sun sets on those farm roads are absolutely amazing. But you're so task-orientated, you're so busy going to work, going to the, to the uh, what's it, the grind, the meal. Uh, you don't see the sunset, you don't see the sunrise on those beautiful places that God has enabled and made it possible for you to work. It's how you, it's how you hmm, describe your life that you'll eventually start living, what you speak over yourself. So to be a blessed person, be a blessed person, watch the council, watch your associates, and watch your language over your life. Blessed is he who doesn't allow the negative to hit him. Now comes what defines him positively. Verse 2. But his delight. Underline that. But his delight. Not the demand. Not the duty. But the delight. His delight is in the law of the Lord. And on this he meditates day and night. You know what it means to meditate? Huh? You sit on top of a mountain. You know, oh, no, 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 no. Okay? Eastern religions talk about emptying the mind. When we talk about meditate, we talk about focus, fill the mind with the truth of the Scripture. Meditate on the Word of the Lord. What does it mean to meditate? Well, the exact, the exact interpretation of the word ashrai, which is the Hebrew for meditate, ashrai, is ku. You're in a dove coos. It's a sick day for my okay. <laughs> It's a great idea. If you want to expand the meaning, it's when you make a noise uh, that an animal makes whilst chewing the cud. Now, have you ever watched your boys, especially boys, when you give them their favorite food and they sit at a table? So, you know, they go, whoa, 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 no. Yeah, they, huh? Hmm. Hmm. That's what it is to delight, to meditate. The delight is to meditate on the law of the Lord. 
So it's to take the scripture and to repeat it to yourself under your breath, to murmur it, to speak it to yourself throughout the day. And then, you know what's so awesome? When David wrote this psalm, the, the, the scriptures he's talking about, they only had the first five books of the Bible. Now, come on. Genesis is from creation up to Joshua. Then, then, then we get Exodus, which is who? Who's in Exodus? Who, who's in the book of Exodus? Moses, as he leads the people out of bondage. They, those are two good books. I can handle Genesis and Exodus. And then it gets to Leviticus. And then Numbers. And, and, and then Deuteronomy. Woo! <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay? Genesis, Exodus, those two I can handle. And, and to delight and to meditate on Genesis. Tell the story of creation and tell the story of, of, of God revealing himself through Noah and the flood and, and all the way through to Joshua who lived. And those are good stories. Exodus, the whole getting out of Egypt and the plagues and, and the wilderness travel. Yeah, that's okay. And yes. Leviticus? Come on, who's read Leviticus all the way through? <laughs> Numbers and then Deuteronomy, the law a second time. Just a repeat of Leviticus. Okay? Such a bad name you can't even say it in Afrikaans. Deuteronomy. Okay. But but the law that he meditates on. Oh, those five. What have we got? we got 66 books. We've got the full revelation of God. This is now complete, and we have it, all 66 books. Is this a part of our life? The blessed man, the happy man, the man who, who sees that Onse Vader, wat in die himmel is, laat Sy naam geheilig word. Laat in naam geheilig word. And we see it in the scripture. But are we, are we truly meditating? Are we truly people of the word? Sean, where do I go to to get counsel? Sean, where do I go to learn practical application of how to do life? Sean, where do I go to change my speech, to, to reaffirm who I am in God and, and how God sees me and how do I speak blessing over myself? How do I learn to do that? There's three no's, there's only one yes. Delight yourself. Delight yourself in the law. Of the Lord. Do you want to know how you know whether you delight yourself? Do you want to know? Okay. When you get invited on a Thursday night to come to the men's to Bible study, you go, uh, okay, I haven't got anything else on. And afterwards, we're going to go to McDonald's and we're going to have a, oh yeah! Where's the delight? Where's the delight? We're going to go to church on Sunday. Uh, okay. And afterwards we're going to go to spur. Yes! Test yourself. Wherein do you truly delight? What's your true delight? My sermon, in a sense, is finished. There's nothing more to say, except to say that the psalm then goes on to depict the life of a blessed man and the life of a wicked man. Now, I want you to see the depiction. Here's where I want you to switch your imagination on. Is your life the life 
of a blessed man, a happy man. Because here's where I started by saying, unfortunately, I don't see much of this in the church. And maybe that's why people don't see the need to come back to church. Maybe that's why people are hesitant. Now, I don't want to put ideas or thoughts into people's heads. I don't want to read people's motives or intentions. But, but follow me here. It says, He will be like a tree. He will be like a tree. Blessed man, happy woman, your counsel will be from God. How does that counsel look? You will be like a tree. Hello, tree. What tree are you? What tree are you? Guess what? If you're a blessed person, you're a tree. Okay? Some of you vain can say, well, I'm a sapling. <laughs> yeah, I'm still fine and thin and dainty and twiggy and uh, whatever. Okay? So, <laughs> cherry tree. Yes, my cherry. Cherry tree. That's a nice tree. Okay. What, what about an oak tree? What kind of picture is that oak tree? Oak tree is a big tree. Wide branches. Okay? Lots of shade. What about a willow? Oh, there's lots of willows. Yeah. Monday morning. <laughs> willows. <sighs> Dragging yourself off to work. Yeah. But guess what? You're all called to be trees. Why tree? Why, why does he say the blessed man is like a tree? Because a tree speak, speaks of progression. A tree takes a lifetime to mature. It's not an overnight thing. Yes? Okay. But a tree talks about progression. I love evangelists. And evangelists are people who come and they just want to get you born again. They just want to get you saved. But there's so much more than just salvation. There's regeneration, there's, there's growth, there's maturity, there's, there's, there's becoming all that God wants you to be, wiping off all the stuff that doesn't belong and putting in the things that Christ died to enable you to live out. Your holiness, your sanctification, your reiniging, all that is deel van die progress, die, 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 die beweging van geboorte tot volmaakte. A tree speaks about you go through a progression, you go through, and what happens to many Christians is they get founded, they, they're born again, and they just left. This says you're a tree planted. You're like a tree planted in streams of living water. The Heilige Geest is bezig om in jou leven jou te vorm. Busy shaping you, busy growing you every single moment of every single day. Unfortunately, we have people who have a testimony as I was saved 40 years ago and well, that's it. I was more saved 40 years ago. Uh-uh. Uh-uh. You have to be a tree planted showing progression, showing growth. Are there seasons? You don't grow every single day. There's times where you lie a little bit dormant, where you go a little bit, but you bikie any culte, but you bikie rest. You go a year near a bow open, you do next, you rest, and you create your rach for the volgende groei seizoen. But you is altijd bezig, you is you is gevestig in die heilige geest, in die werk van die heilige geest, in en dier jou. Too many people just sit. You know what's so amazing is you take a rock and you throw it into a water, a river, and it can be surrounded completely by that river that's flowing and it can be wet everywhere on the outside. But if you get a, a, a thing and you cut it in half, what's, what's on the inside? It's dry. 
So many Christians are sitting in churches completely submersed in the work of the Holy Spirit, the praise of God, the fellowship of believers, and yet they do not allow it to penetrate inside. They're not firmly planted. So on the outside they wet and shiny and look so nice, but on the inside they dry and crumbly. Not happy. You scratch the surface. We sit and ons gee voor in die kerk dat alles oké okay is. Maar binnen is het droog en door en alles val uit mekaar uit. En ons gaan soek ons raad by verkeerde plekke. Ons gaan ons vlug weg na goed wat, wat nie ons toevlug is nie. Want ons bly nie by die woord nie. Die antwoord vir alles is die woord. Want die woord, listen, why is this so important? Because this is a means to an end. What's the end? God. Okay? I don't know if you even do it anymore. Vrouwens, nou met cellfone en smartphones en al die, jy het seker net al die foto's is nou op die op die phone, nee. All, all photos are now on the phone. So I don't, I don't quite know how to do this. But in the good old days, when, when a husband and a wife or a boyfriend and a girlfriend were separated for a while, then you'd see the, the, the girl at the office. She'd open her handbag. She'd get her purse out and put it on her desk and then she'd well, no one's looking. She'd quickly pull the picture of him out. And, and is, that her, is that her boyfriend? No, it's just a picture. But man. Just, yeah. You can't do that on your phone now. It looks a bit stupid. Is he looking at a mirror or what? <laughs> <laughs> See yourself, didn't he? But you had those photos and they became crinkled and crumpled and there were edges and but wow when you just wanted to remember what he looks like. And and you know if the photo was taken five or seven years ago, how much more better? <laughs> they were still in the good old days. I noticed Nalene stopped scrapbooking about 20 years ago. <laughs> yeah, now it's just scrap, no booking. I don't know. But anyway. You can't carry God around with you in the sense that we, we, we can't see him, we live by faith. But here we have representation. Here we can, we can get to know him. We can... We can delight in him. We can remind ourselves of his love for us and our love for him. Trees planted in streams of living waters symbolizing progression and growth. Permanence planted, steadfast. And then it says, interesting thing, which yields its fruit in its season. It's producing. A happy life produces. A happy life is productive. A happy life is... Well, you know what a, a nice piece of cold watermelon or a nice cold, any piece of fruit on a hot day, you know how refreshing and nice that is? You know what a happy person is? It's a person who produces fruit that satisfies other people on those hot days. Is your life producing? Are you a tree? Are you planted? Are you growing? Are you producing? Is there a reason I should get to know you? Is there a reason I should get to know you? What tree are you? What are you producing? And then it says, and in whatever he does, he prospers.
Whatever he does, he prospers. What tree are you? Are you prosperous? Do you know God's presence and benefit in your life every day? Are you being prosperous? Am I talking about money here? Ah, Talking about money and that you are someone that people want to be around. Success attracts people. Success breeds other people wanting to be near you, asking, sitting with you. But unfortunately, the church very seldom looks like trees that are planted, that are growing, that are producing, and that are prosperous. We speak with the mentality of, I just don't have everything, I just don't have enough, I just haven't, I still need, instead of being satisfied and producing and being prosperous. If you die today, Jy vandag sterf. Wat gaan jy morgen nodig hee, wat jy nie vandag al gehad het nie? Can't wait for the kids to get out of the house. Tomorrow if you're dead, who cares? Can't wait to marry this girl. Once I've married her, my life is going to fall into place. Seven years later, can't wait to get this out of my life. Uh, as soon as I'm rid of her, my life will fall into place. Hmm? Instead of being productive and prosperous in today. That's what we're called to be. Okay, so, that's what a prosperous person or a happy person or a blessed person looks like. Those who have happy endings. That's what they look like. So are you a tree? Or are you chaff? Are you chaff? Look at verse 4. The wicked are not so. They are like chaff, which the wind drives away. What is chaff? It's that stuff that, it's the, the, the pod where in the, the productive and nutritious wheat is, but it's that, that what, what's the Afrikaans? It's that, the husk, yeah, that the wheat is in. So what do you do? You beat it, beat it, beat it, and then you throw it up in the air, and then the heavy wheat falls back to the ground, and the wind takes the chaff. The, the husk, the, the dry, useless, no nutritionous chaff away. And it's driven by the wind. What's interesting is in Ephesians chapter 2, verse 1. Listen to what it says here. Paul writing to the, to the church in Ephesus, chapter 2, verse 1, he says... And you were dead in your trespasses and sins, in which you formerly walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, of the spirit that is now working in the sons of disobedience. You see, the devil would like you to, to would like to say to you, you you who who uh, who are wicked, who are sinners, who are scoffers, you who live in your own life, you're in charge. You're in control. Don't give over to to God. Don't give over to someone else to determine what happens in your life. You're in charge. You're the main man. You're the one who's driven by the wind. Eindelijk is hy nie in beheer nie. Waar die wind jou wil vat, vat hy jou. Where the devil wants to take you, he will take you. You'll be like chaff, which the wind drives away. Therefore, the wicked will not stand in the judgment nor sinners in the assembly of the righteous. For the Lord knows the way of the righteous. The Lord knows the way of the righteous, but the way of the wicked will perish. And that's the word that the psalm ends on. The way of the wicked will end in death. 
destruction, desolation, you will perish. Blessed, blessed or dying. A tree planted or chaff driven by the wind. Think of people. Think of people in this church. Think of people in any church. Think of people at your workplace. Think of people that you want to associate and you want to be with because they're wicked, they're sinners, and they're scoffers, and you would rather go to them for counsel, for action, and for how you view your life, or will you go to God and allow Him to be your counsel? Will you delight in the law of the Lord and meditate on this every day? Allow the Word of God to drift out of your life. Allow the Word of God to fall away from your focus. Allow the Word of God to become second-rate and second-hand in your life, and you will become like chaff driven by the wind, and you will end in destruction. You will end in having spent time with the wrong people. You will end in not a good place. soos kaf vir die wind verstrooi. Daar is die Afrikaans vir jou. Net lang genoeg wacht. Dit is bykie stadig vir oogend. Okay. <laughs> God's plan for your life is that you'll multiply, that you'll produce, that you'll fill, and that you'll rule. Satan's plan is that you'll become a dry shell of what God planned for your life. You'll be removed from the stream of living water. You'll stop producing. You'll stop being prosperous. You won't be planted on anything. And the wind will drive you. You'll be this today and this tomorrow, and this the next day. And there won't be any stability. There won't be any prosperity and there won't be any purpose to your existence. Why should I get to know you? I'm not going to waste my time. But the blessed man, the blessed man is the puppy dog who gets chosen because he's the one with a happy ending. What does your life look like? Who like your liver? We like your liver. You know what? I'm done. But I want to say to you this morning. Psalm 1 is probably one of the most known psalms in the Bible along with Psalm 23. But it's the one that we think we know so well. Same as Sel as sê ons een vader, ons dink, ons, het, ons ken om uit ons koppe uit, en ons sê om soos een ruimpie, en ons bid om, en is, maar gaan en doen jouself een gins, doen, doen die wereld, doen jou bierman een gins. Hy het nodig, dat jy vandag besluit, Heere, voor u, nie voor mense, nie, nie omdat ek gesien wil wees, maar ek wil hee, jy moet my weervat en my plant, plant me in the stream, of living water. Plant me there as a tree that will progress, that will grow daily, and I will take charge of my growth. I will come to you for counsel. I won't go to the, I won't go to the, 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 the sinners. I won't go to the scoffers. I won't go to the mockers. I will take responsibility by ensuring that I'm always planted. How will I know when I'm not? The Word of God will no longer be my delight. People who've sinned, people who've, 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 who've gone away. What, what do people do when, when they sin? They, they stop going to church. But, well, it's obvious because, you know, the church is going to judge them. No, it's because Satan wants to alienate them in order to isolate them. So, who said it? 
I think Sonel, I, I don't know who said it, someone said, Sonel said it at the beginning of the church. Reach out. Look who's not here and go fetch them. Ask them if the Dermony has visited. He probably has. If he hasn't, you can come and kick my backside and get me to go visit them. But you reach out to those who aren't here anymore because they're not planted. Their delight is no longer the word of God and they're busy becoming chaff. Holy Spirit, place someone's name on my heart right now. Someone that you want me to make contact with in this week. Because here I sit, blessed, happy. But I know that there are people who aren't here this morning because they're no longer blessed, they're no longer happy, they're no longer planted, they, they're being driven by the wind and they don't even realize it. So plaas een naam op my hart. Iemand met wie ek kon te gaan maak in hierdie week, Heere. Ek neem verantwoordelijkheid, nie net vir my eie leven voor u, maar vir iemand anders sin het ook. You know how awesome it is to do that? To say to God, I'm not only praying for myself, I'm not only seeing that I'm going to get it into heaven, but I'm going to take responsibility for this person who's, whose name you've now placed on my heart. I'm going to get them into heaven. I'm going to get them replanted. I'm going to get them growing, producing, and being prosperous again as you work through me. It's not our work. It's the Holy Spirit of God in us. It's easy to pray, Our Father, But if there's 60 or 70 people that used to be here that aren't here anymore, and we're still saying our Father, but it's now our 40, not our 100 anymore. How can we just pray that and let it go by? Let's grab those people and say to them, he was once our Father together, now I see he's just my Father. Where are you, brother? Where are you, sister? Boss, yeah. Father, help us to not only be selfish in the sense that I said this morning, I'm glad we're so few here this morning, because <coughs> I only want to share this with a few people. And the reason why I say that is because only a few people are going to take responsibility for one other, other than themselves. So, Father, I pray that, that we, the church, will take responsibility for the fellowship of the church. And we'll seek to be the blessed ones who live as an example to those around us that counsel is not to be found anywhere else but in God. Holy Spirit, come, speak to us. Give us a great, great week. Help us to be encouraged in all that we do. Help us to be productive and, pro and prosperous in all our ways. And we'll give you the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Declaring there is hope and there is freedom. I speak Jesus.